Well, it's July 3rd, which means it is. tomorrow is Splody Day. We went to see some Splodies tonight. It's not the 4th yet! But that's when my, tonight's when my town had them. But don't encourage them! It was a professional show. So? When the professionals do it, that's when the amateur bumfuck mother, mother jackass idiot with a bottle rocket up his, decides, hey, it's cool for me too. You sound like you're 80. I, I like to make my own explosives. And we give you two days a year in America. <laughs> you have two days where you are allowed to blow up whatever the fuck you want for two whole... What? What's the other one? New Year's. You don't set off fireworks on New Year's. No, you fire guns straight in the air. You don't do that either. <laughs> you do. It's you set off fire. You set off fire. Maybe in the fucking cow town you come from. <laughs> You set off fireworks on New Year's and 4th of July. You get 48 okay. hours. 48 Up glorious here, hours. On New Year's Eve, it's usually about 8 fucking degrees out. So you do not set off fireworks. Because that means going outside. And you don't fucking go outside. You sit inside and you drink. You still, you have license for two glorious days to set off explosives. As you will. That is America. And yet, motherfuckers. You saw when I was in, in Minnesota visiting Sarah. You saw June 30th. It's not even fucking July yet. June 30th. People were setting off fucking explosions. The dog was losing his mind. It 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 was no. Oh, and, and now I have a, I've got a cat who does not like the explosions either. It He's, doesn't really bother me. And weirdly, like, even though Dottie's a total scaredy cat, like these two could not give a fuck. <laughs> We came home, there was shit going off all over the neighborhood, and they're both like sleeping in their window bins. They don't care. Well, in any event, Sploding Day... Miracle, never, Miracle couldn't hear shit, so... Sploding Day is a wonderful opportunity for our show, because obviously next week we're going to have stories. And they just legalized, like New Jersey, I know someone in the chat is saying they set off fireworks in years in South Jersey. I am new to Jersey. I've only been in Jersey two years, so fair enough. But I did see, like, nothing was illegal was legal for, like, civilians to own until very recently. Now you can own, like, sparklers and, like, the little wussy stuff. But you're not supposed to own anything concussive. Like, you're not supposed to privately have, like, a fucking bottle rocket in Jersey. Believe me, my neighborhood sounds like a war zone half the time. So that is not a law that is strictly enforced. And I'm talking, like, we moved in in a month. We moved in in, like, May. And we were sitting out on our deck and we're like, are those fireworks? But why? So it's not a strictly enforced law, as far as I can tell. Well, they can't sell them there. But what you can do is drive across to another state yeah. and buy them, and you're fine. But technically, if you're caught owning them, you get a citation or something. Well, if they're exploded, they don't belong to anybody. True. <laughs> Dan is thinking about this one. No. I okay. Don't. No, no. I was, I was, I was remembering the game I used to play in the part of St. Louis I lived in, which we called fireworks or gunshots. <laughs> we were, th we went to the drive-through after the fireworks oh. <laughs> tonight because I wanted a McFlurry, and there were some fucking asshole teenagers in a car ahead of us who were just, you know, carrying on and honking their horn, and they threw like a glowy necklace at the drive-through window, and I'd spend the whole rest of the trip home explaining to Dan that no. He could not follow them home and either yell at their parents or beat them up. And that there was no situation in which that would be an okay, not psychotic thing to do. So don't help him. I got enough on my hands. Did, did, did your vows happen to include any assurances of bail? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a legal plan to work. He does. He gets free lawyers. <laughs> Thank anyway. God. Anyway, now that we've covered all that, it's time for the nonsense. Oh, God. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong? But before we get started with the news tonight, we have to give a little bit of a shout out, a little bit of a thank you to an individual who 
I have to say, in some way, has contributed to and inspired this show. Um, some of you may know him, some of you may not. Um, but I read his stuff for many years, and it's 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 a sad day, but you know the the man's earned a break. Chuck Shepard, the uh, <gasps> no, he's not dead. Okay, he's not dead. No, no, he's not dead. Chuck Shepard of News of the Weird, um, has officially retired. Oh, um. He, he says, quote, I am now exhausted after 30 years in the rackets. <laughs> That's a direct fucking quote. This guy's like a fucking pro. Yeah. I don't even know where he finds this shit. He's, he's been doing it since I was in college, since before then. I read his column it's, in the local weekly paper. He's been doing this since we were 10. Yeah. He is the granddaddy of bizarre news on the fucking internet and he's finally taking a much deserved rest from news of the weird chuck thank you for your inspiration thank you for all you have contributed to making things weirder and i'm probably sure after about another what i'm it's gonna be 14 more years of this for me <laughs> i will be ready to check the fuck out too you think you're gonna go that long anything's possible Anything is possible. All right. And speaking of fireworks. You're going to look like Saruman by then. <laughs> speaking of fireworks, we have some science we, to, to coincide with our nonsense. Um, science. Yeah. Just who do you think gets in the most accidents with fireworks? Dumbass men. I look forward to your comments. You're right! And science agrees with you! According YouTube to, ain't gonna like that one bit, though. Fuck them! According to a recent study, the most hospitalizations... We call this graph, Teenage Boys Are Idiots in One Chart. The most <laughs> hospitalizations <laughs> for firework-related injuries teenage boys ages 10 to 19. And this is why you're not allowed to teach my nephew how to blow shit up and until he's out of the demographic area of danger. How is he going to learn about sparkler bombs if I don't teach him? He's not. And he'll keep all his fingers. And I want to point out, the injuries do not reach parity between men and, fee men and women having getting injured with fireworks <laughs> until the age of 55. Until you're an AA fucking RP. Right. Because up until that age, men are still blowing themselves up. Because you look, it's pretty much at a rate of like three to one. Yeah, it's more, it's more or less a flat line across that chart for women. It goes up a little bit in the teenage, but mostly for men, it's like zoom. Let's see. Um, and of course. You'll never guess when hospitalizations spike. Month of July. It goes from potential on a, it goes from 1890 hospitalizations in June to 15,554 firework related hospitalizations in the month like, of July. Like just stop. They're not they're not safe. Watch your kids. And by kids, I mean If they can't men. vote, they're kids. Well, even when you look at the chart, even even know, 20 to 24 is still bad. Yeah, even 20 to 24, it's almost as bad as the 15 to if 19. If they can't rent a car, they're still kids. Nope, 25 to 29, still pretty bad. Yeah. It doesn't taper off until 50, Tara. We have scientific evidence that up until the age of 50, men are self-destructive imbeciles. I mean, I know this for a fact, because I live well, with a man so, who's going to be 48 in a month, and he's itching to burn the house. So <laughs> I know Tara tells stories. Well, before I was in the Army, I was in my teens. We had fireworks wars. Use those little Saturn missile batteries as hand grenades. 
At one point, I took a cardboard tube and stuffed it with as many bottle rockets as I could oh and put a blast shield on it and uh, fired it off, set the blast shield on fire. It was the best night ever. To be fair. <laughs> to be fair. So this chart is me. Dan grew up, like, in the dust bowl before electricity. <laughs> so there wasn't anything else to do, right? Besides, like pop tar bubbles on the street or did you have paved roads we had paved roads <laughs> this is why i come at you with a hammer sometimes <laughs> <laughs> this is why i hide the matches because <sighs> i live with this chart <laughs> Let's look at some more science this week. It's just in a different direction. Ladies and gentlemen, I am relieved to report that no, NASA does in fact not have a child slave colony on Mars. NASA has denied it has a child slave colony on Mars after a guess on Alex Jones's InfoWars claimed the agency had kidnapped kids and sent them on a two-decade mission to the Red Planet. Spokesman this publication has fucking White House press credentials. Yep. Spokesman for Mars Exploration at NASA, Guy Webster, told the Daily Beast, there are no humans on Mars. There are no active rovers on Mars. There was a rumor going around last week there weren't. There are. But there are no humans. Ladies, we... no, no child slaves. There is, there is no child porn ring in a pizza place. There are no child slaves on Mars. Or if there are child slaves on Mars, they're not ours. That's the fucking Martians <laughs> crap. I can't say definitively there are no child slaves in space, but I'm pretty sure none of them are human children. Right. If the Martians don't have child labor laws, that's none of our fucking business. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it, isn't that a state's rights thing? I don't know, but certainly not our jurisdiction. Right. I, okay, this... Try to just everyone in America right now, everyone outside of America is just pointing and laughing, but everyone in America, try to wrap your head around this. A press organization with White House credentials caused NASA to have to release a public statement cl clarifying that there is not a secret child slave facility on Mars. Like, where would they be getting these children? I guess. I mean, it's Alex Jones, so he probably thinks that's where all the Sandy Hook kids really are. Well, they're kidnapped and sent into space. I, it's. And I. And what are the child slaves doing on Mars? I don't. Oh, being harvested for blood and bone marrow. Not to be, you know. Well, well, just to be practical, um, couldn't you do that here? Yeah, like you don't have to go to Mars for that. That seems like a really expensive operation. Yeah. Okay, Maybe first. That's why healthcare is so expensive in America. Because we have to pay to ship everybody to fucking Mars first. Okay, step one. Yeah, we're going to kidnap a bunch of kids. Uh huh. I'm going to shoot them on a rocket to Mars. I like it. What's step two? We're going to harvest their blood and bone marrow. Wait, 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 wait. I got to run that by accounting. Because that seems that seems like a really expensive step, and we got a budget here, you know? Yeah. You know? I just this this is this is is not funny anymore. No. This shit's getting scary. Yeah. And I, I want to quote and This our, is me. This is me, the person who thinks the fucking Denver International Airport is an <laughs> Illuminati bunker. This is basically like Fox Mulder with Dana Scully's hair saying that this shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. And I, I have to end with, with one quote from our president. Ugh. He told Jones, your reputation is amazing. It is, in fact, amazing. Isn't I am it? amazed. 
I, I dare say it's incredible. Yeah. Well, next up, and we have video of this. Um, it's come from Arkansas. Now, this this has been happening in the South in various incarnations for the past 20 years or so. Um, the Ten Commandments. It must be on the courtroom <laughs> grounds. And I want to point out, before we go into the story, every time this has happened, it's been struck down because church-state separation. Okay. I appreciate the places in which the Church of Satan jumps in and is like, really? Okay, we're erecting a statue of Baphomet. Yeah, you know. You can't stop us. But the, whenever this... generally support Satan, but I like what his PR people are doing these days. I'm down with these Ten Commandment monuments mainly because they are erected by private individuals at great expense and then have to be taken down, so they're just wasting their money. <laughs> And by God, more power to them. That's the American way. So I pretty much, I just sit, I snicker, I wait for them to go away. Th this guy did not do that. He did the stupid thing. And let's get the video up here so everybody can see the stupid thing. Here we go. It's a little hard to see, but watch. Guy's sitting in his car. Here you go when you're faced with adversity and trial. Oh my goodness. Freedom! He shouts freedom. And then he drives his car into the Ten Commandments monument. You know what the irony is? There is no commandment that says thou shalt not destroy public property. There isn't. There there isn't. There, there's because, you know, what was the first thing Moses did when he got back with the Ten Commandments? He smashed one of them. They might have been on that third one. There you go. <laughs> Technically, this guy's still right with Jesus. Less than a day after a monument at the Ten Commandments was installed outside the Arkansas State Capitol in Little Rock, it was destroyed by a man. It was destroyed when a man smashed a car into the stone. Authorities say Michael T. Reed II drove a 2016 Dodge Dart. Oh, God. <laughs> Into the 6,000-pound granite slab at about 447 I'm local surprised. time on Wednesday. I'm surprised the dart won. <laughs> Tough little car. Yeah. Video that appears to have been taken from the inside of the car was posted to the Facebook account. Now, that's, that's the best part. He posted the video himself of Michael Reed early Wednesday. Powell told the AP that officials believe the video is authentic. Shows what looked like the Arkansas State Capitol building. A man's voice says, Oh my goodness, freedom, as the car careens at the monument. Mike does point out that technically he did break all Ten Commandments. Ah! ah. I know that the Church of Satan does not literally worship Satan. I, I was making a funny. Yes. I'm aware. My God. So, yeah, this is... And I do have to... Okay, this guy's mugshot is is he's. I mean, the problem is you're now going to go to jail when that thing probably would have been gone in a couple months anyway. Right. He look. He's very pleased with himself. I mean, at some point it would have been declared unconstitutional because yep. it is. Yeah. And it would have gone away. But you wrecked your car and you're going to jail. And you're going to get sued. You're going to have to pay for that monument. You have to pay for it now. Um. Yeah. You're you're you also you've destroyed pro destruction of property. Uh, depending on how much that monument cost, it, it could be a misdemeanor or a felony. You're, you're, you're going, you, you could have just waited them out. Right. Was, it's not going to be worth it is what we're saying. Yeah. We're, we're not. These things, you're right. Like every few years, someone tries this and inevitably it gets declared unconstitutional because it is because there's this whole separation of church and state thing. Right. And it doesn't, and it goes away. You know, it's, it. Just and like, I was raised Catholic. I went to catechism every Sunday morning. Ten Commandments are a great thing. Most of our laws, if you really boil them down, are based on them. But not everybody's Christian, and that's fine. I mean, I'm probably the shittiest Catholic in the world right now. But like, America is based on it's okay to not think the same thing I do. So you can't do that. 
but you can't run it over with your car either. Yeah, because if you do, they'll just put it back. They will. You idiot. They'll put it back and then they'll get sued again. And yeah. the great circle of life keeps going. Oh, next one comes from Bridgeport. Bridgeport, Connecticut? Yeah. Oh. This is kind Where of... Where I went to college. I wouldn't be saying that very loudly right now. <laughs> um, You know, was I, am I wrong? Or when we were younger, were, were our scandals just handled better? Or at least smarter? Where are politicians? Yeah, they would they would get into scandals, but they would handle them a bit more competently, wouldn't they? Because we didn't all have fucking Twitter. <sighs> this fucking guy. There wasn't there wasn't an immortal record of every stupid fucking thing we ever did. Ethics commissioner in Bridgeport charged in prostitution mix up. The ethics commissioner. Surprises me none. If you knew Bridgeport. Surprises me none. Ethics Commissioner Dr. Noel Kao has an ethics dilemma of his own after police say they arrested him outside a hotel here for mistaking a wo local woman for the prostitute he had ordered online. Oh, dear. I will not resign, the 39-year-old cardiovascular researcher and member of the Bridgeport Ethics Commission proclaimed Tuesday. After it became mon public Monday, he was charged with patronizing a prostitute, but in the end, it may not be up to him. Here's what happened. Police say Monday they were called to the Quality Suites on South Avenue. Wow, that is one of the most misnomer names for, for a hotel chain. The Quality Suites. <laughs> Not really. Uh, when officers arrived at the hotel parking lot, they found 20-year-old Linda Pina and her boyfriend, 19-year-old Tyler Purcell, both of Watkins Street, trying to wash pepper spray out of K.O.'s eyes. K.O. told officers he answered an advertisement on the website Backpage.com for a, quote, petite, shy Latina new to the area. I arranged to meet the woman outside the hotel for a, quote, massage and happy ending, police said. Police say that when K.O. saw Pia standing outside the hotel, he just assumed she was the shy Latina he was there to meet. Police said, however, Pia told them she had not contacted K.O., uh, they said she told them she had previously agreed to pose nude for a photographer in New York in exchange for money she and her boyfriend were going to use to move to a better apartment. Police say Pena told them the, phot the photographer arrived to have one of his associates meet her at the hotel and give her the money. When she saw Kale pull up, she thought he was the associate with the money. That's just like a comedy of errors. But let me, let me explain why this is dumb. I don't... If you're not familiar with Connecticut, Connecticut has a really large Latino population. Mm -hmm. Like when I lived in Danbury, it's like 20 or 30 percent Brazilian during the World Cup. You couldn't even go down Main Street. Like there are a lot of Latino people in Connecticut. So if you ordered a Latino prostitute, Latina prostitute, I, you don't just walk up to the first Latina you see and assume she's your prostitute because there's probably 30 Latina women on that street. Uh, it's got to be one of them, right? Like, <laughs> no, no. It gets better. Police say Pina got into Ko's car and immediately demanded her money, but Ko re repeatedly argued he wanted his services first. Pina, afraid that Ko was going to sexually assault her, pulled out her pepper spray canister and shot him in the face. <laughs> they say Purcell, who was waiting nearby, believed his girlfriend was in danger, ran to the car and blasted K.O. in the face with his own pepper spray canister. Oh so, the, yeah, this whole... And, and now he's like, I won't resign. You should just resign for being that stupid. You really should just go. Um, yeah. Because well, like, yeah, the mayor of Bridgeport, while I was in college, there was widely regarded as being connected to the mob and like it's Bridgeport, man. We gonna do. They got a minor league baseball team now. <laughs> but when I was in college, we we were pretty near the ferry to Long Island, and another dude that I knew that was also from Long Island 
decided to walk to the ferry, which was a thing you did not do. Like, even a broke college student, you'd pay the eight bucks for the cab ride because you didn't walk. The place where the ferry was was a shitty neighborhood. I don't know if it still is. And a prostitute, like, beat him up and stole his McDonald's. He got himself McDonald's to eat on the ferry. And he got beat up and had his McDonald's stolen. His Big Mac value meal. Okay. Anyway. It's Bridgeport. Oh, I j- now this Home of P.T. Barnum. This next one is, I just flew this weekend. And this shit always freaks me out because, first of all, flying, it's, it's a steel tube filled with monkeys <laughs> hurled into the sky at shocking velocity. So already we're, it, it's, it's kind of a, a tumultuous situation. But I've always remember that my chances of getting back on the ground at any point, any person on that plane could ruin them. Mm -hmm. So when I read a story like this, it just makes me like, Jesus Christ, can't I drive everywhere, please? Elderly passenger chucks coins into plane's engine for luck causes five hour delay. How would that bring you luck? (laughs) Shanghai. A superstitious passenger delayed a flight from Shanghai for several hours on Tuesday after throwing coins at the plane's engine for luck. Elderly woman was detained by police at Shanghai Pudong International Airport following the bizarre incident, forcing nearly 150 passengers to be evacuated from the plane bound for Guangzhou in southern China and causing a five-hour delay. The 80-year-old threw nine coins at the engines of of China South Airlines flight CZ-380 as she was boarding on the tarmac. Eight of the coins missed missed their target, but one nestled inside an engine, adding that a passenger spotted her and pointed to authorities. Now, you can't... You can't throw anything into a jet engine. No! You just can't. You know what brought down Sully's plane? A fucking bird. Bird. Hit the engine. You, it, there's even a term for it. It's called bird strike. Yeah. You can't. No. When when because what's going to happen when that engine starts spinning is those coins are going to move and they're going to move very very quickly and they're going to get lodged into something. You need to not fall the fuck out of the sky. That's the kind of luck you're looking for. Yeah. Falling the fuck out of the sky kind of luck. Unless you're hoping to die. (laughs) But in that case, hope to die alone. That sounds terrible. Don't, don't, don't do this. Hundreds of thousands of Weibo users had a field day. That's, that's like Chinese social media. Uh, with one commenting sarcastically, Grandma, this is not a wish fountain with turtles. Like, why, why, why would you think that's good luck? I know. It's of all the things. I, and this, We were at the House on the Rock, and people, every time there was a pool of water, it was full of money. Yeah. Everybody we throws money. Do that. But I don't understand. I've never understood the whole idea of I'm going to throw money into something and get lucky. It's, I don't understand how the fu- stupid things like, did you ever, when you were in high school, every time you drove through a yellow light, you had to punch, punch the, the ceiling. Yeah. I picked Why? that up. I don't Why know. Do do I don't know. Why do we have to spank snap Snapple before we can drink it? Only Snapple. You never did that. That one I to, did not do. You have to slap the bottom of the Snapple before you can open it. I just shook it. No, you got to slap, you got to spank it. I don't know why, just Snapple, but it's a thing. Like, we do stupid things, and we don't know why. I just... It... And I'm the weird fucking hillbilly when you're spanking your beverage. <laughs> you are. Because <laughs> you know what I don't do? I don't set shit on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I had hobbies as a child. Yes, not spanking s- your beverages. Not serial killer training. <laughs> Oh, uh, this last one uh, comes from Aspen, Colorado. And this is just. God damn it. 
this is escalating the this is compounding the error. This is definitely falls into the category of compounding the error. Woman admits backing her car into Aspen Pond, then crashing hotel shuttle. Glenwood Springs woman who was not supposed to be driving admitted to accidentally backing her car into a pond at Aspen Meadows early Monday morning and then taking a hotel shuttle parked nearby, which she later crashed into a wall. Elizabeth Burtquist, 24, also attempted to report her car stolen, though quickly admitted she was at the wheel when the 2006 Chevy Malibu went into the pond. Um, police first learned the car was in the pond early Monday when a detective responded to the scene and found a prescription bottle with Burquist's name on it and a small marijuana container floating in the pond. <laughs> Another officer looked around the area, found a pair of wet socks, Another small marijuana container about 200 miles from the pond. Later, a Meadows employee reported that another worker discovered an Aspen Meadows van with the engine still running parked on a south path, uh, on a walking path south of uh, the Don't Hosier Center. Employees later discovered scratches on the van's front bumper and a set of keys in the center console to a Chevy vehicle. Then, 11.20 a.m., Burke was called police, said I had her car stolen. She'd already had her license revoked oh. for DUI arrest in June of 2016. Here, here's the thing. Yeah. In like a video game, like the chat's all going GTA is not a LARP. If, <laughs> if your vehicle is disabled, you just go and get in another vehicle. And that's how you deal with that. That's not how life is. It's not. Though. If you get a flat tire, you just don't walk up to the next car and get in it and drive away. Yeah, and it's... Your stars all come back. Like, that's not reality. This is how Uber works, right? No. No. No, that's that's not... That's... If you already don't have a fucking license, you shouldn't be driving. And I say that, I've done it before. Well, has, but... your, has your license been expired or taken away from you? It was suspended. Yeah. You've all heard this story. I got pulled over with suspended license, yeah. and expired registration, and no insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. I was dumb. Don't do that. Took me a very long time to fix it all. But you certainly don't get fucking baked and drive into a pond. I didn't do that. And then try to report the shit stolen while and then steal just another car. car. Because obviously you get the concept of stealing is wrong because you tried to call the police about it. Right. And yet you're stealing a car yourself. Yeah. Uh, of course she... And you left the keys to your stolen car in the car you stole. <laughs> she might have been so baked she thought the like a good neighbor people just told her, just take this one. Like we watch you're a lot fine. of files at night. Weirdly, that's what we put on, on the TV in the bedroom when we go to sleep. I married a goth. But th you yeah. don't need the forensic experts for this one. You yeah. left your card keys there. They know it was you. They don't got to go after the DNA. And there's there's the picture. I'm going to just show the picture. There it is, sitting in the pond. Sad little car sitting in the pond. <laughs> like, how did she even get out? I don't know. And she had the And she had the presence of mind to get the keys. But not the marijuana containers, which right. is hilarious. She's just throwing marijuana all over the place. Those are some high fucking fish in that pond. <laughs> you got some fucked up koi right now. <laughs> you just, you can't, you, you. My God, you can't do this shit. You, you took the keys. She took the keys. You're like, I, I will come back for this later. No, you won't. You're not going to get it out of there, man. <laughs> no, it's just a little flooded. I'll wait till it dries out. Yeah. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll come back when I'm less fucked up. Uh, I'm probably just imagining all this water. It's probably fine. Yeah, it's no big deal. It's not... yeah, the, the first thing we learned this week is they probably took your license for a damn good reason. Take the hint. Yeah. Because, yeah. They, 
Yeah. We've learned that throwing anything into an engine is bad luck. Is bad luck. That's that's not the luck you're looking for. Throw a whole fucking leprechaun in a engine, it's bad luck. Yes. We've learned that um maybe the next time you arrange to meet a prostitute, you should like do the the, the red carnation yeah. thing like they did in ye olden days. Yeah. Just to, so you don't end up with two faces full of of pepper spray. Yeah. It's goddamn. We've learned that sometimes you have to rely on the system to work. Sometimes. And not drive your goddamn car into things. Driving your goddamn car into things is almost never the answer. I mean, it's not like they're going to be like, oh, okay. There's a car in our monument. I guess we're done. No! We see your, we see your point. Yeah. Separation of church and state is important. And we appreciate you separating those things with your dart. That's not how it's going to go. We've learned, yet again, there are no child slaves on Mars. At least not ours. Yeah, if there are any child slaves on Mars, they ain't human. They ain't we our have problem. to do with it. Yep, that's y'all's fault. Y'all need to get a little more progressive space. Child slavery's wrong. Get your shit together. It's 21st century. Come on. Like, maybe they need the Ten Commandments. I know. Actually, the Ten Commandments doesn't say anything about slavery. It doesn't. The Bible's full of slavery. Yeah, that's yeah. true. The Bible's all fucking about exactly how many times you can beat your slaves every day. And the last thing we learned, we actually learned something. We learned that the most accidents with fireworks in the United States of America... Are Our fucking bag young men. Yep. Our demographic. <laughs> and I, I swear to God, some one of those assholes is watching right now is going, fuck you, I'm gonna play with fireworks if I want. Fuck you. That's right. Watch you this. know, you know what? Hey, you watching right now, you're right. We're wrong. Go show yeah. us how wrong we are. You shove that oh, bottle up. Go tell Darwin to suck your dick. You shove and then that blow it off. You're an American. Goddamn right. You shoved that bottle rocket right up your ass. You have rights. 